Kia ora koutou. Thank you, very, everyone. Um, it's remarkable to hear the history and be reminded of the history um, of the Clearinghouse. Um, I think it does, um, where we've come from um, and where we're going, puts us in a good stead for the future, I think. Um, I'd like to acknowledge those who have gone before, obviously the University of Canterbury um, and the NGO Consortium, the Ministry of Social Development, and of course, um, the current Clearinghouse team. <laughs> Um, as Janet says, it's, it's quite strange for me, actually, representing the funder. Um, but, of course, um, I work at Superu now um, and have done uh, worked at the Cam Families Commission since 2005. Been involved in family violence prevention since 1987, I suppose. Um, and um, things change and things stay the same sometimes. Um, this idea of evidence and knowing, I can't quite remember, when was the first Agenda for Family Violence Research, Janet? Oh, 1998. Um, uh, so, you know, the, the idea that we need a coherence in terms of knowing about what we don't know and a coherence in terms of um, meeting our evidence gaps has been around for uh, quite a while. So, I could, listening to the presentations that come through in my mind, you know, we, we make some steps forward and, and, but the question still remains. So we have a long way to go, I suppose, is the message for, for, for me. Um, in 2011, uh, the responsibility for funding the Clearinghouse moved from the Ministry of Social Development to, to us um, at the Family Commission then at the time and, and now Subaru, primarily because um, government felt that it was more akin with the role they wanted for us um, and it uh, seemed to fit. Um, there was an increased focus in terms of evidence. To inform decision making, um, I think, was the general push that there was this greater, there was a belief that basically um, if we were more if we used evidence in a better way, um, we would achieve better outcomes for families and our own communities. That's the general goal. That's the general view that, in fact, evidence is not a static thing, but we use that evidence in our decision-making processes um, to better inform outcomes for families and whanau. But of course, it's challenging, isn't it? Um, reflect, reflecting back and, and, and um, hearing what we've talked about this morning, because family violence prevention is a complex issue, but we, all of us, I think, still look for simple solutions. A single program, I wish, a pill, perhaps, that might be it. Um, but we do, we do, we look for singular answers, um, and over very short time frames. Um, I think these are inter intergenerational issues, but we seem to want to not look at intergenerational long-term solutions. Um, and the evidence, um, I think since I've been involved, now it's preventable. Family violence is preventable. That's the best gift of all, that it is preventable. There are ways in which we can prevent violence going forward. Um, but in order to take those steps forward, I think um, these issues can't be resolved without robust frank, evidence-informed discussions. I think that frankness and that fearlessness is what I value in terms of the clearinghouse, that, it, that slight independence, um, because I think um, in order to engage in an evidence-informed discussions, we should be unafraid of evidence, and we should be unafraid of um, um, having those discussions in a frank way. Um, and that is where the Clearinghouse comes in, and I uh, and Subaru are incredibly proud to be associated with the Clearinghouse um, and the role we've played in it and the team that you've got. Um, it is a remarkable achievement. Um, we are looking forward to the next 10 years, I think. Um, it's really important that um, the Clearinghouse and its function continues that I think is clear um, and I think we need it as a country. Thank you very much. <laughs>